People often think that Microsoft is responsible for everything once they migrate to the Azure cloud. That is a wrong notion to have. When it comes to the cloud, both the cloud provider, Microsoft in this case, and the cloud tenant, which is you, the customer, have a role to play. So let's take a closer look at this. Who is responsible for what in the cloud? Now, Microsoft is responsible for the security of the Azure cloud, but whatever you put on Azure is your responsibility, is the responsibility of the tenant or you, the customer. And to make a better sense of this, Microsoft have what is known as the Azure shared responsibility model. This has to do with what you as a cloud customer is responsible for, that is what you manage in the cloud versus what the cloud provider, Microsoft in this case, is responsible for. Now, let's take a closer look at this diagram to see who is responsible for what, depending on the cloud model that you choose. Each of the models have different level of responsibility. The green and white label one shows what you manage, and the blue and white label ones represent what the cloud provider manages. Starting from my left here, if you run all your workload and apps on premises, then you own everything and you're responsible for everything from security to uptime and maintenance of your environment and so on. However, when you move from on premises to the cloud, it comes with some benefits, which I already mentioned, I already discussed this in an earlier lesson, but the summary is that it relieves you of all the infrastructure maintenance burden and all the other stuff. Let's look at the next block, IaaS in this case. IaaS stands for infrastructure as a service. And IaaS is similar to how we do virtualization. The difference here is that the infrastructure is not yours. It belongs to the cloud provider, in this case, Microsoft. We can use this platform to set up our virtual machines and we'll have control over what we install on that virtual machine. You can turn it off if you like and so on. Again, the difference is that the machine is not residing in your data center. Next is PaaS. PaaS stands for Platform as a Service. PaaS is a platform that allows developers to build and run programs without the need to worry about hardware issues or operating system patches and so on. PaaS makes things easy, especially for developers because they can have access to an environment that has all the tools that they need to work with. With PaaS, Microsoft manages the infrastructure, also the operating system and the middleware while you worry about managing your applications and your data. Example of this would be Azure SQL. When you use SQL on Azure, you can just focus on your SQL instance and the data that you have on the SQL instance. Next is SaaS. SaaS stands for Software as a Service. SaaS offers a pay-as-you-go model for the usage of softwares. With SaaS, you can consume the softwares that the platform offers via the web browser without the need to have them installed on your local computer. For SaaS, Microsoft is responsible for managing everything, including your applications. The only exception here is your data. You are responsible for your data when you use SaaS. A very good example of this will be Microsoft 365. You will notice that one generic item that you're going to be responsible for, regardless of the cloud model that you choose, is your data. Microsoft have invested very heavily in securing the Azure environment, but you own the data that you put on Azure and you're responsible for protecting the data. And there are many tools that the platform gives you to do that.